When dealing with a rational expression, one of the first things we're going to need to do is determine if there's any non-permissible values for our variable. If you look at our first expression, x minus 3 over x minus 5, what we need to make sure is we need to make sure that we're never dividing by 0. So we need to make sure that our denominator is not 0 because if our denominator is 0, our expression is going to be undefined. So in this expression, all we really care about is the x minus 5. So what we want to do is we want to find out how to make x minus 5 not equal to 0. The equal sign with a line drawn through it means not equal to. So we'd solve this like we'd solve any regular equation. We add 5 to both sides. And this tells us that in this equation, x cannot equal 5. Because if x equaled 5, then our denominator would be 0 and our expression would be undefined. If we have a more complicated one, again, we're only looking at the denominator. The only part that we care about is x squared minus x minus 6. We know that this cannot equal 0. What we're going to do here is we're going to factor it. Because we've got a quadratic, we've got an x squared term, we're going to need to find the factors of our expression. And we know that whatever our factors are, they can't be equal to 0. So looking for two numbers that multiply to give us negative 6 and add to give us negative 1, we're going to find that our numbers are negative 3 and positive 2. So x minus 3 is a factor, x plus 2 is a factor, which means in order to make these 0, in this case, x cannot be equal to 3, and in this case, x cannot e be equal to negative 2. If I substituted this into my equation, I would get 3 squared, which is 9, minus 3, which is 6, minus another 6 is 0. I would get the same thing if I put the negative 2 in. Negative 2 squared is positive 4, minus negative 2 is positive 6, minus 6 is 0. So in this expression, whatever our values for x are, they can't be equal to 3 or negative 2 because that would make our expression undefined. Finally, we get a situation where we can't factor. Again, we want to make sure that x squared plus 1 cannot equal 0. We're going to solve for x. We're going to get rid of the 1 and we get x squared is not equal to negative 1. To get rid of that squared, we're going to take the square root, and we get x is not equal to the square root of negative 1. Since we know the square root of negative 1 does not exist, because you can't take the square root of a negative, you get i, or an imaginary number. Because this number does not exist, all numbers are permissible For x, there is no number that we could substitute in for x that is going to give us a denominator of 0. So there are no non-permissible values. All of the values of x are allowed.